Grizz Nation, welcome into our first of many episodes here of Grizz Classics as we all practice our social distancing during these unprecedented times here in April, the coronavirus kind of taking all of our lives over, but we're going to provide plenty of entertainment, and I have a lot of emphasis on that word here as you see who I have with me, head coach Bobby Houck, as well as Grizzly legends in Chan Schillinger, and Mark Mariani is joining us as well. Guys, first off, this is going to be a blast. Thanks for joining us. Chalk talk here of one of the best Grizz football games ever, the 9 semifinal against Appalachian State. We're going to have a lot of fun here in the next little bit. Well, this will be a, this will be a good time. It's, it's great to have Mark and Shan on. And, you know, I don't believe any of us have ever had the chance to actually go back and watch this game because we had to get on to the national championship game. So I – I took the two TV guys out after this game to enjoy some of Missoula's nightlife and celebrate the win. And then we got on to the next game at six the next morning because we had to leave to go to the championship at, at uh, noon on Tuesday. So our prep was always hard for those national championship games. And so for all of you guys, all three of you, have you guys ever watched this game start to finish before? Shan, Mark, you guys as well? I have not. No. Um, my coach said you're on to the next. And- uh, I've watched, you know, obviously the highlights of it, but I've never had the, the opportunity of watching the full game. And, and it's kind of luxury, or when you're in the business, you move on to the next and try to get the next one. So I have not watched them either. Yeah, it's crazy. It's obviously one of the greatest moments of our lives in pads and, and on the field. And uh, never, never have watched it. I've seen the clips and I've watched the highlights and I, I, I watched again just to prep for this and the hair, the hair is still standing up on the back of my neck, man. This is an unbelievable night and it was an honor to be a part of. Uh, it, what's crazy about this part too, is all three of you, this was at the time, your last game ever at Washington Grizzly stadium. What uh, I, I couldn't even imagine the emotion going through, but really you guys being seniors and coach Houck, at the time, we didn't know, but this would this could have been your last game too. I mean, that had to put some extra uh, special meaning in this going into the contest. I'll tell you what: when we get to the end, when we get to the end of this thing, let's go out and uh, we'll talk about what we did after the game. That sounds like fun. I think a lot of people want to know. I know what those two did. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want yeah, to. Leave. No, I didn't go downtown. No, I didn't go downtown. <laughs> let's get into this a little bit. Take on the number one seed Montana Grizzlies in an FCS semifinal matchup. As we take a look at the brackets, the winner quite simply moves on to Chattanooga for the title game. So Villanova was already in. They they not only didn't have to travel to Chattanooga very far in terms of distance, they had a day they had time ahead of us to prepare and watch us too. We are set to get things underway from Washington. Stadium, Todd Harris, along with Charles Arbuckle, and a beautiful day for football. I think a lot of people wouldn't know this, but six years in a row, one of these two teams was in the national championship game from 2004 to 2009. Going into it, did you guys kind of have that feel of, okay, these are the the two premier programs in the FCS, and and it kind of felt national championship-wise? I I think no doubt. Um, You know, these guys were awfully good, and, uh, you know, we we were the number one seed, but – we knew what we were up against. I, we, we've been watching these guys my f- redshirt year, freshman year, and sophomore year win the national championship, and I had wanted a piece of these guys the entire time. And so there was a lot riding on this. Whether what it, it didn't matter what the seeds were, this was huge, and you could feel it all throughout the country, in my opinion. And what was unique to me was uh, the two teams. One was on the east, one was on the west. We had no common opponents. Um, and I think the uncertainty of the game, how we're going to match up, probably was what made it such an exciting game because two power programs that have no common opponents and how are they going to stack up? And that was always the intriguing thing. How are we going to match up with them? Obviously, uh, quite fine. I'm going to spend more time on this special teams play than any other <laughs> game, probably. But this oh, yeah. one, the kickoff. There's a couple things right here. You see our guys swarming all over them there. That's pretty cool. And then uh, one of my favorite guys, Cole Lockwood, right there, is the guy that made the tackle. And, uh, you know, great, great, great guy from uh, Big Sky High School, man, or Sentinel. What were your guys' first impressions of the crowd, the atmosphere? I mean, we talk about it a lot, but you, you guys know this, being there sideline-wise. What was it truly like? Well, what's crazy about watching this is I remember we didn't have permanent lights at the time, so we had to get lights brought in. This might have been our first time, second time maybe under the lights. 
but it's not this is a clear night nothing nothing in the you know as far as the forecast we'll see here in a couple of minutes it starts blizzarding to so to see an opening kickoff with the atmosphere like this and a nice night is crazy the way this game ends but there was just so much energy in there that night it, it's unbelievable great play getting them stopped there's some shots here the the tailgating espn just ate this stuff up they had not been here a bunch of times and uh they just uh, – they, they loved it, man. It was fun watching everybody. Crazy with it. And talk about crazy, Charles. Now, I know there's that student body seal, but it's seven – A lot of people still talk about this game right now as maybe the launch pad for FCS football, just on a national stage. Did you guys feel that maybe at the time or, or even maybe years afterwards? Did you feel that this was probably the first premier FCS game and obviously you put on quite the show? I think it's still the highest rated of all time. And I'll talk about that when the snow starts flying. The TV guys shared some things with me. But, you know, you look at this, feels like 15. That's nothing. These are Montana kids. They, they still think it's summer. Co Coach Houck used to tell us, this is the biggest game in the country because we're playing in it. <laughs> this was the biggest game in the country, and everybody knew it. And this was the, this was the big show that night. So they're going to talk about you here, Mark. Oh, I'll pick your feet up, kid. Yeah, this is the man, Mark Mariani. Very intimidating in pads. Yeah, we're going to see some stuff where they were they were uh, they were big on containing you, and they uh, to their detriment. You made your share of plays in this game, but this was Chase Reynolds' night, man. He rushed for two hundred on him in uh, what became a pretty inclement night. Well, here's the road to the semis for the Montana Grizzlies. Remember, undefeated this season. They what stands out from seeing those two scores from the two previous games to get you here? Well, that's its own show. <laughs> it's <laughs> own. <laughs> We're going to see a stat here coming up, but obviously those are two great games in the stadium. Uh, obviously, Mark was a human highlight film in that South Dakota State comeback where we're down four touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and the stands are clearing out, and we came back and beat them by two touchdowns. And then the Stephen F. Austin game in a quarterfinal game to beat them 51 nothing. that one gets kind of lost because of the great games around it. But they came in, in, the, in into that game, the leading scoring, passing, and total offense in all of America, and they got shut out by our guys. One of the greatest comebacks, they say, in Montana history, no question about it, down by some 40-some points. Stephen F. Austin absolutely dominated them by way of the turnovers. They forced 10 in that so we game. Got, we got to hear. With Appalachian State, the winner moves on to the championship next week in Chattanooga. This good stuff, little stretch play. And carry off the left -hand side. Chase was good. No, he was. Didn't need a whole lot of daylight there, that boy. Yeah, those guys, that's called body on body, man. We're big personnel there, and, and uh, they didn't uh, – that, that play's going to show itself. We, we uh, kept going back to that. Did you have a feeling that that was going to work in the game plan going in? Was that kind of the, the mainstay with it? Well, that's why we ran it, Riley. Well, I figure. <laughs> I, I knew something like that was coming. It only took us five minutes for the first time. <laughs> No, that was, that was obviously a, a big, uh, big play, big gain. Uh, and then there's a couple things. One, uh, this, the little thing at the bottom of the screen here, after that play, that we'd scored 98 unanswered points. The end of the, end of the South Dakota State game, the 51 straight in the uh, quarterfinal game, and then that one there, 98 straight. That's unbelievable. I never knew that. That is awesome. I didn't either until I saw this. The last 87 35 of play. They absolutely dominate Stephen F. Austin, and they're continuing it today. So that's the same play we just ran uh, against them. Stretch, pulling the two uncovered. And it's, uh, it's a replay. This was, you know, read zone and all that stuff is everybody's doing it. In this day and age, uh, there wasn't as much of it. And Armani Edwards, this was a big play, in my opinion. Uh, because we got him – anytime you got that guy on the ground, he was a special dude. And, you know, Mark was talking about uh, their record over the previous four years with this guy at quarterback. 
they'd only lost they lost two games this year, but he didn't play in either one of them. And I think over a four year span, they only lost like like three games when he was playing. Bonnie Edwards out of the gun. He'll keep the ball this time. Get to the line of scrimmage. Good tackle by Stahl. Yes, it is. This defense, man. First and ten, ball at the twenty-five. <clears throat> Here's our guy. You remember that? Oh, yeah. I remember this night very well. And you're right. I didn't make a ton of them, but I just remember once we came out from halftime, we'll see this. We just said, listen. I mean, it wasn't hard to count the rock with Chase Reynolds, but we were like, listen, we are going to run this ball right down their throat until that freaking clock says zero, and that's what we did, one after the other after the other. And I love seeing these highlights, man. Well, you had a, you had a six-game stretch mark where you played better than maybe any receiver in the history of the school, and maybe by a large margin. Well, there we go. The Grizz are fired up about that one. You remember that, Shan? I uh, do, no, Coach. My favorite part is uh, seeing our man Kevin Clay on the sideline. He was excited as well. Um, but, yeah, that was a – Violent hit, uh, one I'll never forget. That's me standing over him. He was <laughs> cold now. He's pre coach is pretending like he's checking on him. He's really talking smack to him. I was gonna say, exactly. what, what were the words of encouragement? <laughs> See when his eyes opened, I talked a little smack. But, <laughs> I mean, this kid took a shot. I actually, we're gonna see the replay. I actually thought this was a catch and a fumble, and we got on him. It's a great shot by Keith Thompson, and I, I thought it was a fumble. Just a really good and, – and you know what? In this day and age of targeting and all that, his face is up. He hits him with the face mask. That's probably a legal hit in this day and age even. <laughs> Look at – yeah, there's some guys tell, telling him about it. <laughs> So, we were down at – this is the first drive uh, of the second half coming out of uh, coming out of the locker room. We were down 10-7 at halftime. It was just, uh, you know, it was a back-and-forth game. We scored that first one. They scored 10 straight. We just couldn't get it in the end zone. We kept stalling out. We didn't punt a whole bunch. Um, you know, that first stop uh, – we stopped them on fourth and five, and that was the, the minute I said, okay – Jerry Morris thinks he's the underdog. They're going to go for it all night, which is kind of what they did, except in long yardage situations. But so this, as the snow started to fly here, uh, after the game, Todd Harris, the, the color guy on the TV, he told me he didn't do a whole lot of play-by-play uh, -play stuff. Uh, he, excuse me, he's a play-by-play -play guy. He told me they kept talking, hey, Todd, the ratings are going through the roof. Don't goof this up. <laughs> <laughs> People started clicking through the channels and watching it. So, still out of the gun. It's amazing how many people have asked me, well, "Did you play in the game versus App State when the snow was falling?" Everyone remembers this game. That is just good stuff. There's a bunch of big boys clearing the way. It's good when you happen. when you guys came out of the tunnel for the first time, like after halftime and saw all this snow, what, what was some of the first things that went through your head? I mean, it's like it feels looks like a totally different game than what we were watching in the first half. We freaking loved it. You see any sleeves out there? This is our this is our territory, man. We love this, and we knew at least on the offensive side of the ball, we knew what the game plan was, man. It is it is physical football time, and it was game on. Some of us were cold, so I know they had to be cold because they were not definitely used to this weather. So it was cold that night. It was real cold that night. It was chilly, obviously, with the snow coming down. So getting that guy on the ground is great. And then th this was a big play because they moved it down the field right after we had scored. So we got with that sack, we got him into long yardage. And uh, this was a good play by you, Shanley. It, uh, I remember we were pressure and they, uh, so I thought the ball was going to come out quick and uh, he kind of doubled me, he kind of slid and go and I thought if I give this up on third and 15, I'm going to run out of the tunnel and go home. So thankfully I uh, was able to get it out. We brought six man pressure, there's not much help there, so you have, that's you versus him one on one. And they tried to, they did, they tried to double move you, great job with your hands getting it out. Mm. Big time deal now. Beast mode. Good play. 
So they go to, they have to field goal it, and sure enough. Special teams, special teams. Donnie picks it up, doesn't fumble it. That was good, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> It was, a, it was a trademark. Look at them. They're going absolutely bonkers. Did you just back that up so you could hear him say Bobby Howe trademark again? I can't get enough of that. You know okay. <laughs> Third time if you want. Go ahead. Good stuff. I can't remember if this was Mullins or Mettler. Do you guys remember? Right here. Mullins. Yeah, Mullins with the left right there. That's, that's Austin, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. it is. Good job, Austin Mullins. Big pop. Nice job. I mean, first and ten. so good. So good. So first and ten. this sounds like the old Notre Dame Sundays. Later, moving on to further action in the third. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, we punted after that block field goal. They went down and scored. And so we're, we're back down by three again with a minute, a little over a minute First left in the ten. third. This is just great stuff here. Now that, that's absolute patience there by Chase and good job by everybody moving their feet up front and keeping bodies on bodies. Now I want to show you something here. And then Mark, you can talk about what the deal here for our wide receivers and still is but this is mr all-american that i'm talking to right here number 80 and then number 16 is javen sambrano who we're going to see a highlight of here in a minute but watch these guys here their effort downfield getting the touchdown blocks i'll tell you what i'll tell you what man we we got it we got it ground in, into us so hard but I mean, this dude made us all look good, first of all, Chase Reynolds. But second of all, we're going to see a highlight of Javon Sembrano. But before that, later in this film, I don't know if we're going to have the play. I got my, my young rook in there absolutely annihilating some dude on a block as well. That might have been the proudest moment of this highlight for me is Javon. <laughs> Javon, because it starts from the top with me and Ty, but you see a young cat like that following your lead, and, all right, and like, man, we're going, all right, we're going to leave this program in a good place. Yeah, he, he didn't look like the guy that would crack that safety on the power like he did, but he, he got after him. But you, you, uh, you flat blocked this dude to death. <laughs> well, I like that, man. That was my thing. Uh, I mean, look at that. That, was my thing. that guy's tired of it. <laughs> Wasn't going to be my guy. <laughs> oh, that is good stuff. Down three, man. You've got to be urgent. We're going crazy. So we stall out. Field goal attempt to tie it. He's a level Not exactly optimum yards. conditions. Old Brody McKnight sticks it through. I don't think I ever heard him cheer that loud for a field goal before. So they get the ball back, start of the fourth quarter. They get a little drive going. You can see we're on the we're, we're on the 30, whatever, two or three going in. And uh, Edwards pumps once, decides to go for that a boy, Shan. Shan man, dude. It was, uh, remember when Kevin he, he, he called to the side of his goal, which I thought was weird, but they released the backside tight end. And, and uh, good for him. He was able to be in the right spot. Yeah, that was uh, – you know, the, the formation into keeping the field guy in. in. Exactly. We're going to get, you know, we aren't going to get there with the, with the uh, seven man or eight man, seven man protection. Had the right call on. <laughs> nice job. Mark would have scored if he had it. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> Shut up. That is so <laughs> us. Did you, think for a, did you think for a second you were going to score there, Shan, for uh, even one iota? I, I, I know it's a great. I should have cut that back. Mark would have scored. Um, but that, that, was a, that was a special moment. Uh, you think it don't fumble it. That is my thing. Just fall back to our offense and go winning this thing. This is the opposite of social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Four 
That's the best player in the country. Yeah, he's the best. Not named uh, Mark Mariani, Chase Reynolds, or Shan Schellinger. <laughs> So this, this is big. Old Sev made the play here. Uh, well, again, they we they're hard to stop, and that was the first play uh, down in there. First down, got him behind the chains and made him try to kick it again. Again, tied. You, you can see the went back and forth a little bit, and we got down into this drive. They got, I don't know. I can't remember exactly when they got the ball back. Six or seven minutes left. I think seven. And they drove down in there for another field goal. And we got him again. <laughs> Colossal. Oh, that's good stuff. So then we got it back, and, and we we're in, back in our own end. And it's, it's the same play where we're pulling. It's stretch play where we're pulling the two uncovered offensive linemen. Man, we had a, we had a good old line there. Look at Verlanik get around there. 71 man Vern, he, he he blocked for him in eight man football in Drummond, Montana in high school. Now they're they're uh, third year players in college playing national semifinal game. And again, if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, Mark's playing his ass off blocking down field. This oh I I thought this was the one I saw Jabin. Mass being grabbed, trying to get him down to the ground. A 27-yard pickup. Junior out of Drummond, Mont. Are we going Clock's to running to down. These guys are talking overtime. So this is here. It is. We got a we got a penalty. Knocked us back. And I remember exactly this call. So we're we're first and ten. We just had the big run. It went backwards, and uh, the conversation on the headphones was, "Let's take a shot here." And you'll be able to see their bluff and blitz, and then they're gonna roll coverage. And you can't see the one player over here, but you'll be able to see his shadow, and then you'll be able to watch the safety come. And they're tilting coverage to Mark over here, and they're leaving Sambrano here, one-on-one -on -one press coverage in first and 20. So you can see the safety rolling out here, and you can see the guy rolling down. They tilt coverage, guy can't get there. So good, man. Uh, that's good stuff, huh? Right next thing. <clears throat> what a big play. Yeah. I'll never forget as that. Big as it gets. So they get back. Uh, this is uh, – we get – we blitz them. Uh, we, we, were, we were afraid to go after him, so they moved it right down the field on us. They had a minute 30 left. You can see there's 37 seconds. From the uh, incompletion on first down. We blitzed him. And Oof. he has time. He can buy himself so much time. And then Quick up here was, was – lock, we had Tremaine locked in on Quick. Obviously, both those guys played in the NFL. And True makes a nice play on second down. has to get rid of it early. He's got Quick. He's a good player right there, too. That's a good boy. He's a good looking guy. John did a nice job tackling him, knocking him down, not letting him make an accurate throw. What a great play. For the Mountaineers, ball at the top. So this play is the one that, that uh, fourth and 10, I thought the game was over here. We uh, Unbelievable. a little soft in coverage down here. But we got to let the inside guy go first. They run a little switch route. But right here, you can see the first down line. You know, he's got to control the ball over that line. <laughs> gets it away. Pass complete. Where do they mark it? And I just – I never thought the uh, the ball ever got Edward beyond that Pressure line when he away. had control of it. Pass complete. Where do they mark it? It's going to depend on the spot. And this was a day and age where replay wasn't every single game for you guys either, not like it is now. So little known fact, now look at this thing. So he spots it. I don't think that was a particularly great spot. In fact, I thought it was by a yard. 
in my in my entire coaching career, this is the only time I challenged a call on replay. Ever. Wow. To this day. That's wild. So we'll take a look at it here. I mean, in they roll. I don't know. I, I think that I met the replay official. I think he was probably might have been past his bedtime. He might not have seen it very well. <laughs> I mean, look at that. Look at 70. 18 oh. seconds left, fourth and 10. Oh, my God. I have to win. Goodness. Oh, well, this adds to the drama. Exactly. Well, they got it. They had no timeouts. I want to know what Shan Man's thinking right here. I was happy to have Coach Townsend because I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> Some extra time. I like it. A little extra time. So, here, six seconds left. They moved it down inside the five. We're in our, or our goal line seven defense. So, we used to call it short zone down here. Which oh, yeah. We're down. Everybody sits. You'll see us. We don't get any depth. Probably should have got a little better depth this way on the uh, on the route from this backer, but uh, Fish makes a nice play. Six seconds to go, ball at the three. Edwards goes to the end zone. Ball batted up in the air. Yeah. I remember Fish t telling me that he watched that play in film in, in film the week before. He knew he knew that under was coming or whatever that little that yeah, little he, angle was. Good. What's that? He's definitely a film junkie. He paid attention. Yeah, yeah. Don't you think you could have gotten the the hometown clock to get that thing? Moving? I was just saying, yes, that is what was going to come out of everybody's mouth, and and Mark was standing. Mark was standing with me over on the sideline, and that's exactly what I was yelling. I wasn't yelling at the referees. I was yelling at the booth, going, "Aren't we at home? That should be at zero, right?" I think that I think that guy uh, moved on career wise after that. <laughs> uh, so we didn't get that. Now they run. They run a. We're in the same coverage, same everything. Uh, they run a little different look, same kind of bunch look, getting people in the same spots. But they run. They they saw what we we're in, but they run a little pivot route down here with Quick, who's their best player, not named Armani Edwards. He's gonna run a little pivot in and out here, and Stall sitting right there, and Tremaine knows he's got help inside and so we'll get to see what happens great play man how about the clock never started <laughs> check it out wow i never noticed that <laughs> either it never started. <laughs> didn't matter how fun was that boys excuse me Probably the, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, so fortunate to have the opportunity to play in that game under, you know, the two best teams in the, you know, at the time. I will never forget it. And uh, to do it with the guys that, you know, the winningest group in Montana history of the senior class, you know, obviously Mark and many others, but and uh, to go out that way in that stadium is, uh, Bruce Chills is awesome. I don't want to say I have lost words. It was um, – Tell them it was, what you did, Mark. Hey, tell them what you guys all did, Mark, after the game. I'm drawing a blank on what, what you're what – you're... Shan, I remember distinctly because I went out and watched it. We, uh, I remember going out of the stadium after we went up the locker room and going down and taking pictures. That, you know, that's our last time ever in that stadium. And just soaking it all in and getting all the pictures and the memories. And just the memories of being there and the memories of being there and probably should get them posted up because – like I said, that was, that was it. We knew we were never going to play there again. And to go out that way, it was special, special. Well, it's a, it's a different feeling when you know win or lose, it's your last game there. Right. And so under the lights on the national stage, number one team in the country, wire to wire, a lot riding on it. And then the big dogs, to me, App State come into town. And to be able to come together with the guys, what, what I'll never forget about this group, Shan Man, and you can let me know what you – I mean – I never, ever – I believed we were going to win every single game at all. Like, we were down there for a little bit. There was never a doubt in our mind with these group. I had so much faith in our defense, so much faith in our young guys making plays on special teams, so much faith in our offense that somebody was going to make a play that, like, we just had no doubts ever. So much love for you guys on the other side. It was like – it was just meant to be, and this night was kind of 
just kind of the shining moment of this class. And it, it honestly brings a lot of chills and emotions, man. I miss, I miss those guys. That's a pretty special group. Um, over your, over your, as Shan mentioned, over your time here, that was a special group of dudes. But that, that night, you know, I, when I got back uh, two years ago, I had a chance, you know, you can decorate the office how you want it. And you can't see it, it's facing this direction, but I got a, a huge uh, covers the wall picture of the stadium that night with the, uh, the snowfall. And I, I consider it the greatest game in the history of the stadium. As do I. Yeah, that's tough to beat, man. It's tough to beat. I, I, uh, that night was special. I got one myself right here on the wall always. <laughs> that's under the, the lights. That is the exact picture almost that's on my wall. Yeah. Now, now growing up in Haver and Baker and even Big Timber, I mean, could you guys imagine this national scene? I mean, that, that even adds another element to all of this. I mean, growing up 10, 12 years old to even picture yourself in this right now in this setting, did that bring back all the chills too? I mean, going back even to your childhood days? Absolutely. I, uh, like I said, I had to do with other guys from Montana. Uh, many of, you know, obviously Mark and from Adam, the, the Palmer brothers from Missoula, and Mullins from Great Falls, and Lebsock from Billings. A lot of our senior class had a lot of local kids and to represent the state in the way we did. And obviously, our coaching staff had a ton of them as well, which I'll give to Big Timber. And, uh, that, that, to do it in your home state is obviously more special. So uh, it It's given. It's, it's kind of like making me a little emotional just thinking about it just because it's one, of those, it's one of those things that when you're in the moment and when we were grinding so hard every day and just doing our thing, Shan, when we were red shirts and then freshmen, we were always, you know, had a target on our back. We were always highly ranked in the country. We didn't know any better. We didn't know – I guess we didn't really – couldn't feel how special it was to be in moments like this and with your, you know, your family, the – class that you spent five years with and all that and to go out like this um that was our last game is <clears throat> it's it's it was awesome man you can't put words to it and I and I I as I get older the more football I've experienced you just gotta relish these moments so those guys in the locker room now Mark your advice would be to listen when they're told that <laughs> <laughs> listen man <clears throat> I don't know what we bottled up, man, but whatever you were, whatever you were coaching was, was, uh, it sure as hell works and it's gotten me a long way. So yeah. you, they better listen. They better well, figure it out. Good, good. You know, what makes good coaching is good players. And we had good players. And as Riley mentioned, the small town Montana guys and the Montana guys are the core of it. Uh, I think it was remarkable how many small town Montana guys that we had, uh, in our time here that had just such a great playmaking ability and ability to contribute. You know, it, it, it was, it's an awesome bunch, man. And in the locker room, it doesn't matter if you're Mark Mariani and Shan Schillinger or you're Cole Lockwood and Austin Mullins, the guys that are making plays that nobody really kind of remembers, but they're huge plays in the game. And uh, so much uh, respect and admiration for everybody on the team for the others is what made those teams special. Well, guys, this was uh, th this was fun to go back and look at. I still can't believe you haven't watched the full game. I, I think this might be a, a good time to do it. I think you have time to, to watch it. This was a good little teaser or preview, but maybe watch the whole three-hour version and just maybe uh, soak it all in. Maybe a good suggestion for you guys now. That'll be good. Hey, Mark, we're going to do this again next week. Will you, uh, in the week after, will you uh, be willing to come back and watch a couple? I'm in, man. I love it. I, I miss it. I miss you guys. I'm always ready. All right. Well, tell Carly and that little one hi, bud. I will, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, Riley. you the man. Shan, man. Yeah, good to see you, brother. This was great. Our first, first edition of the Grizz Classics, as Coach Houck said, this will be at least once a week as we all get through this together for Coach Houck, Shan Schillinger, Mark Mariani, Riley Corcoran signing off for now. But stay tuned. Plenty of Grizz Classics along the way.